Let's do this! Hello, I'm Robert. This is yaymath.org. This project is called Yay Math in Studio, where we dive into complex and high-level mathematics studies. In this case, geometric series, uh, which is an Algebra 2 and a pre-calc uh, concept. And I'm very excited to introduce it to you, right? It looks very weird at first, but we're just gonna open up the gates and make it not so weird, right? I know you probably see this here. I made that as a note to myself. Do not let this thing intimidate you at all. Very good, ended on the last one. Three rounds. Um, Cause I'm not gonna let that happen. Here we go. This is what a geometric series is. All right, it starts as a geometric sequence um, and then we add up all the terms. Again, we're gonna put down a geometric sequence and we're gonna add them all up. That's what makes it a series. Let's look at this first one. Here it says, I'll write it out over here. A1 equals three, R equals two, N equals 10. What this means is A1 is the first term in the sequence. So we can even write A1, A2, A3, a4 and so forth. All right, the first term of the sequence is the number three. We'll put that down. The ratio between them or the rate between them of multiplication, because it's geometric, a geometric sequence progresses by multiplication. Okay, so the rate between them is times two. So that would be six. That would be times two, 12. That would be times two, 24. And n is 10, meaning the number of terms is 10. So we're going all the way down here to a 10, whatever that number is, all right? So you can already see that would be kind of a drag. It would be a bummer to be like, all right, times two, times two, times two. And we could do that using calculators and things like that and add them all up. If you want to, want to be so bad with the calculator because you just do times two, maybe six more times and then you get this number here, okay? This is a geometric sequence. A geometric series means add all terms. Why do I say it like this? Well, I can't stop now. Add all terms in the sequence. There you go. Add all terms in the sequence. So we could do this manually. It would be a bummer. I don't want to do it. I'm going to offer you a formula now for a geometric series. It's the sum of geometric sequence, adding all these up. Here's how it goes. Sn is a1 times one minus r to the n all over one minus r. All right, so this is the formula that's offered in the books. Let's analyze. This is the sum of the first n terms that we seek. In this case, n is 10, so this would be s10, the sum of the first 10 terms. Students tell me that my s's look like fives. Apologies in advance. Here we go. a1 is the first term. Trois, three. One minus the rate of change, two. Two to the n, oh, n is 10 again. All over, one minus two again. Okay, a little space, there you go. All right, so yeah, we do need calculator for this. I think I brought mine over here. All good? Okay. All right, get a calculator. All right, so let's put this in. Your batteries are low. Recommend change of batteries. <laughs> Thank you, Texas Instruments. That is actually cool, they put that in. All right, so this is three. 1 minus 2 to the 10, put it in, on, 2 to the 10, 1024, 1 minus 1024, all over 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so ultimately we're going to divide by negative 1, this is 3 times 1 minus 1024 is negative 1023, all over negative 1, all right, multiply those. Three times 1023, three times 1023, 3069. So you'll notice the top will be negative, divided by negative one is 30, 3069. 
I'm telling you a true story. Dollars to donuts, 100% true. I would offer a problem like this on a test or even in an exam. And there would be students, bless them, that recognized what a geometric series was. Is that basically adding a bunch of terms in a sequence. So um, this person or multiple people would get all these numbers. They would do times two, times two, times two, times two, and get all these numbers all the way to A10. And then they would add them all up and they would get the right answer. And I would applaud them because there's no real need to be sort of bogged down by only using the formula if you understand the process of adding a geometric sequence, adding up all the terms, then you could sidestep the whole need for a formula. But what if I ask for n equals 100 or n equals 500 or something like that? It'd be really helpful to have that calculator um, and being able to use the formula to do it, right? But I just wanted to point that out. That's kind of cool. They did it that way. Okay. So in that spirit, I actually want to do this problem both ways. I want to do it with the formula and I want to do it manually and see we get the same thing, right? There's something very satisfying about that to make sure that everything aligns. So let's get the sum of this geometric sequence. We can see that this is geometric because it does progress by multiplication. What are we multiplying by each time? Look closely. One times what is negative four? Negative four times what is positive 16? 16 times what is negative 64? R is negative four, right? So let's go ahead and do it with the formula. S four equals, let's go ahead and jump right into the actual action. I'll put it over here. S n equals a one, one minus R to the n, all over one minus R. So we have that as a reference. And now we can use it over there. First term, one, one minus Negative four. This is cool. I'm glad this is happening to the four. Sure. All over. I get that. Yeah. All over one minus negative four. Okay. So we have to follow order of operations here. It's tempting to say that these two cancel, but they do not, right? The negative four is bounded by this exponent. So the negative four to the fourth will be positive but we'll get one minus that, right? The one is negligible, so that one's gone. This is one minus whatever negative four to the four is. I need that here. And this does cancel one minus negative four because there's no exponent that's happening with this negative four. So this is gonna be all over the number five. Let's find out what negative four to the four is. It's the same as positive four to the four. Four to the four. 256, so this is one minus two, five, six, which is the same as one minus 256 is negative two, five, five, over five. All right, Captain, let's see if I can do this in my, in my noodle, in my brainses. Five into 200 is 40. Uh, five into 55 is 11. So 40 plus 11 is 51, negative 51. All right, jury's out. Let's see if I did it right. Add them up. Here we go. I am physically excited. Uh, one, I just want to see if they're the same. One plus the, I'll actually do a better way to add. This would be 12 plus one is 13. Yeah, so this is 13 up here. And we got 13 plus negative 64. And that's 50, yeah, negative 51. All right, score. Yes. All right, cool. So it worked both ways. Something very satisfying about that. All right, let's introduce you to sigma notation here. One of the reasons, right, I'll just introduce it while I'm even erasing. One of the reasons I've, I've enjoyed doing in studio with you is that I get a chance to introduce this high level stuff, right? In a way that makes sense right from the jump. Anytime you see literally Greek, <laughs> it is an opportunity to run for the hills. Okay. Um, and pick olives, <laughs> but we're not going to do that. All right. Because we're going to explain what this means. 
This is the Greek symbol sigma. It's capital sigma. Sigma in math land means sum. That's it. Let's put it down. Sum. Dot. That's what it means. It means the sum of every term ranging from the first term to the sixth term. So you can see in this sequence that there will be six terms ranging from when k is 1 to k is 6. Let's actually, a really good practice for anyone learning this stuff is to get a fix of what the sequence looks like to actually list out these six terms. And then if you wanted to, you could just add them up and you don't even need this formula or we can use the formula. Either way, I would recommend, especially learning, just write out the six terms or at least some of them, at least the first three. The first term in the sequence, here we go, this is k equals 1, 2, 3, 4, let's see what happens. The first term in the sequence is when k is 1. So we go, k is 1 here. If k is 1, this would be 1 third times 3 to the 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is 0, and 3 to the 0 is the number 1, so this becomes 1 third times 1, this is 1 third. So the first term in the sequence is 1 third. Here's a big hint, oftentimes <clears throat> this coefficient here is the first term. That's usually, a, that's a big hint. It's a giveaway, okay? The next term in the sequence is when k is 2. Let's put in 2 there. So this is 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so that becomes 3 to the 1. 1 third times 3 is the number 1. It goes there. Let's do it again. When k is 3. So we put 3 minus 1 here. That becomes 3 to the positive 2. 1 third times 9. 1 third times 9 is 3. And you can see what's progressing here. This, if you look closely, embedded within, this is a1. And this is r. That's going to happen over and over and over again, okay? So look for those in, within your sequences that this is the first term and this is the rate of change. So you could even just go ahead and fast forward times 3 times 3 times 3 is 9. While we're at it, let's go ahead and do times 3 again to get the fifth term is 27 times 3 again, 81. This is 5. This is 6. Sum all of these blue terms right here and the problem is done. Okay, uh, let's set it up using the formula. So we got S6 equals uh, A1 is 1 third, 1 minus the rate of change is 3 to the, how many terms are we doing? 6, there it is, all over 1 minus R again is 3. Okay. Let's uh, see what floats. This becomes 1 third times, ooh, 1 minus 3 to the 6. We should get 3 to the 6. Here we go. Batteries, hold on, baby, hold on. 7, 2, 9. 1 minus 7, 29. All over negative 2. This becomes 1 third times uh, negative... 728 over negative 2. All right, I'm going to bust this out in the calc. This is 7. So you see negative divided by negative will go away. 728 divided by 2. 364 times a third. And it looks like those, I don't think those, yeah, I don't think those do anything. All right, 364 divided by 3. Yeah, it's 121 and a third. 121 and a third. Which I'm sure we would get if we add all these up. Yeah, we're totally going to get it. Watch, it'll be fun. Again, checking our answers, it's awesome. This is 10. There's 10. This is 30 more, that makes 40. 40. 40 plus 81 is 121. 121 and a third, it works. Okay? So now, that's all sigma means. It just means adds, add up these blue numbers in the sequence. We're going to do this one here. And the good news is, it's, I did this on purpose. It's the same, but you'll notice the k is changing. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and take this off and this off here. And we'll even just take off the K work. Here we go. We'll take that off. And now K ranges from 5 to 13. So it's the same sequence. We can assume A1 is the same. R is the same. However, this sequence progresses from when K is 5 up to 13. So the definition of this sequence starts at 5, then 6, then 7, then 8, all the way from k equals 13. So again, I would recommend getting a fix on what this sequence is. Let's put in 5 here, and that would be the first term in our sequence. All right, the first term in our sequence now is when k is 5. The last term in our sequence is when k is 13. Okay, let's go ahead and do that for one time. 1 third times 3 to the k, in this case, is 5 minus 1. This is 1 third times 3 to the 4th. I know 3 to the 4th is 81. A third of that is 27. See what I'm doing? 27. So now the first term of the sequence is 27. The next term of the sequence is when k is 6, right? Since r is 3, we know. I'm just going to multiply by 3, 81. We'd get that here. K is 6, there it is, 5, all right, that's uh, 3 to the 5th is uh, 81 times 3 is 243, and a third of that is 81, right? All right, so that's fine. So we're progressing by 3 each time, just like before, except now the first term you would call is starting when K is 5, and the last term is when K is 13. So we can get this sequence, or the sum of it, the series using formula again. So now look closely. Is A1 still one third? No. I'll take this off. Take all this now. Here it comes. Here's a question. How many terms are there? Right? How many terms? So then we know what to ask. S what? Well, from five to 13 is how many? I'm gonna count them. Five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 9 terms in this sequence. 9 terms. Does it make sense to you that it's basically the difference between these two, which is 8, but then added 1 to include both terms? All right? It's like, for example, if a, if a, a teacher gave a homework assignment, numbered 5 to 13, please do numbers 5 to 13, you know that you're going, to be go you're going to be doing 9 problems, right? Even though 13 minus 5 is 8, there's 9 total numbers between 5 and 13. It's kind of cool. Equals, first term, 27. 1 minus rate, still 3. How many? 9 over 1 minus rate is still 3. All right, 27, 1 minus, whatever that is, negative 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. All right, let's get 3 to the 9 going. There we go. Okay, 19, 6, 8, 3. There it is. And you know what? I'm just going to use calculator time. Here we go. We got 1 minus that. There it is, times 27, there it is, divided by negative 2, 265, 707. It's kind of amazing, huh? Wow, look at that. You know, if you start at 27 and go up to 9 terms, you're going to end up adding to 265,000. That's fascinating to me. That's the power of multiplication, how fast it can progress really, really fast up. Okay, thank you. Geometric series, there you go. Geometric sequence, add them up. Okay, I hope it all added up for you in your mind. Thank you, bye, thanks for watching.